So by now, I'm sure that you have seen this story from the Washington Post that is making the rounds on social media titled, First Migrant Facility for Children Opens Under Biden. Now, I think that it is really important that leftists know the details of this story because as leftists, myself included, criticize Joe Biden for doing what Donald Trump did effectively, uh, liberals are saying, you know what, leftists are just disingenuously smearing Joe Biden because they don't have the details. They're not willing to dive into the nuance. Um, and what I want to do in this video is just that. I want to dive into the details. I want to be nuanced because regardless of the propaganda that we're seeing at the behest of Joe Biden and the Democratic Party establishment, there's not really a way to defend this. Either way you cut it, like however you look at this or try to spin it, this is bad. And if Donald Trump did this, I think that liberals would be outraged. But because it's Joe Biden, liberals and some leftists, but mostly liberals, are saying, you know, it, it's not what it looks like. I promise. It's not what it looks like. But in actuality, this is an issue. So uh, we're going to read a lot of this article. Uh, this is probably going to be a pretty long video. Uh, but I think that this video, uh, this topic in general, deserves a lot of time. Uh, but first, I want to show you an exchange between Jen Psaki and uh, Peter Ducey who asks her what I think is a pretty fair question uh, with regard to this. And, and let's watch what she has to say. Under Trump, there have been horrifying scenes at the border of kids being kept in cages. And Kamala Harris said, uh, basically, babies in cages is a human rights abuse being committed by the United States government. So how is this any different than that? We very much feel that way. Uh, and so the, these are facilities. Let me, be, let me be clear here. One, there's a pandemic going on. I'm sure you're not suggesting that we have children right next to each other uh, in ways that are not COVID safe, are you? I'm suggesting that Kamala Harris said that this facility, putting people in this facility, was a human rights abuse committed by the United States government. And Joe Biden said, under Trump, there have been horrifying scenes of border uh, at the border of kids being kept in cages. Now it's not under Trump; it's under Biden. This is not kids being kept in cages. But this is this facility. is kids. This is a facility that was opened that's going to follow the same standards as other HHS facilities. It is not a replication. Certainly not. The, that's that is never our intention of replicating the immigration policies of the past administration, but we are in a circumstance where we are not going to expel unaccompanied minors at the border. That would be inhumane. That is not what we are going to do here as an administration. We need to find places that are safe under COVID protocols for kids to be, where they can have access to education, health and mental services, consistent with their best interests. Our goal is for them to then uh, be transferred to families or sponsors. So this is our effort to ensure that kids are treated or not in close proximity and that we are abiding by the health and safety standards that uh, the government has been set out. So there's a lot going on there. First of all, is his question fair? Yes. Although Ross story framed this as a gotcha question, when in actuality, I don't think that this is a gotcha question. Is this a conservative who wants to get the Democratic Party? Sure. But I think that the question that he posed to the White House press secretary, Jan Psaki, is pretty reasonable. Now, uh, there's a lot of things to consider here. First of all, is this different than Donald Trump technically? Yes, because Donald Trump had the family separation policy that he instituted, and the goal of this policy was the cruelty. That was the goal. So if you separate children from their parents at the border, that would act as a deterrent to stop other immigrants from uh, trying to come into the country. And deterrence isn't necessarily something that came up just with Donald Trump. Uh, during the Obama administration, uh, the Obama era, they instituted this program called ATEP, Alien Transfer Exit Program, where they would deport someone who came to this country illegally and drop them off at some like random place in their home country, which is an issue because oftentimes uh, they're not going to be in stable locations. They could be uh, without housing and they may not know anyone. They could literally be in danger. So it's a really cruel way to send a message to people saying, hey, you're not welcome in our country. So there is the difference there that you want to uh, point out. And I think that David Dole did a phenomenal job at really distinguishing between Donald Trump and Joe Biden's program differences here. Uh, having said that, though, uh, she speaks to the need to find somewhere to house these migrants because we have an influx of unaccompanied minors coming here. Now, during the Trump 
years, uh, particularly in May of 2020, as one example, which is cited a lot, uh, there were a lot of migrant teens, uh, adolescents, unaccompanied minors that showed up and they were turned away. Trump's administration didn't even give them the chance to make their case. So I don't want people to think that turning them away would be preferable. That's not the case. We should be welcoming them because remember, it is our policies, the policies of the U.S. government that destabilized Latin America, that led to an influx in immigration. So we should be trying to right the wrongs of our policy failures. So I don't think that turning migrant children away is the correct strategy. I also think that, yes, they should be following COVID protocols. I don't want to see these facilities at overcapacity. Um, the issue overall, however, is that when you step back and you look at all of these things, uh, you know, the, the facts of the matter, yes, there's a pandemic going on. Uh, yes, we don't want to turn these teens away. And on top of that, we want to make sure that the teens in this instance are cared for and that they're not just going to be released uh, into the wild in the United States, if you will, uh, and, and they'll just become homeless teenagers. Of course, we want them to be cared for. But under the umbrella of all of this, it's all happening in the context of incarceration. And what people are drawing attention to is the fact that even if we are not turning away these teens, even if we're trying to pro follow proper pandemic protocols, they are still being detained. They still cannot leave. And so the broader question here is, why are we responding to unaccompanied minors by effectively jailing them, putting kids in cages? Because that is quite literally what is happening. Now, if you read this article from the Washington Post, you might take away a little bit more of a charitable uh, picture of what's happening because uh, the spokesperson for HHS, Mark Weber, um, he basically says, look, this isn't as bad as people are making it out to be sure. Technically, there are kids in, not cages, but facilities. We don't want to say cages. We said cages during the Trump era. Uh, but it's not that bad. So we're going to read what he says. We're going to read the article that gives us the details here. And then we're going to juxtapose what we learned in this article with this article from uh, Mustafa Bayoumi of The Guardian, who actually puts everything into perspective. Because while it might sound at face value reasonable for Joe Biden to do this, in actuality, it's not reasonable. And I also want to get to what AOC says about this as well. So this is going to be long. I'm going to read quite a bit of this, but I do think it's important that we be uh, thorough here. So this is by Sylvia Fosterfrau. Um, he writes, dozens of migrant teens boarded vans Monday for the trip down a dusty road to a former man camp for oil field workers here. The first migrant child facility opened under the Biden administration. The emergency facility, a vestige of the Trump administration that was open for only a month in summer of 2019, is being reactivated to hold up to 700 children ages 13 to 17. Now, this particular facility, this was meant to detain immigrants that came here illegally and were effectively using a jail to house children or jail children like i'm not necessarily worried about the framing here but we need to understand the context of what's happening and where these children are being held Government officials say the camp is needed because facilities for migrant children have had to cut capacity by nearly half because of the coronavirus pandemic. At the same time, the number of unaccompanied children crossing the border has been inching up, with January reporting the highest total, more than 5,700 apprehensions for that month in recent years. So understand there is a problem, and um, we need to figure out how to humanely deal with this issue. There has to be a humane solution rather than just putting them in jails. Of course, it is more cruel to turn them away, which could endanger their lives. So I'm not saying that Biden should do what Trump did. But what I am saying is that perhaps we should rethink the entire system to where we just instinctively put children in cages, in, in jails. Um, now we're going to skip a little bit here. 
So during the campaign, Biden pledged to undo former President Donald Trump's hardline immigration policies. In his first month in office, Biden signed several executive orders reversing many of those policies. Last week, he and the House Democrats introduced a plan that would provide a path to citizenship for 11 million undocumented immigrants. The administration also reversed one of Trump's expulsion practices by accepting unaccompanied children into the country, a change that also is contributing to an increase of minors in government facilities, officials said. Now, also to give uh, Biden credit where it's due, he also um, undid the really, really disgusting remain in Mexico policy to where if someone is seeking asylum, we don't admit them into the country while they wait to make their case. We force them to remain in Mexico. And that doesn't really make sense. If they're seeking asylum here, then why shouldn't we hear them out here where we can keep them safe and make sure that uh, they're not going to be in danger, that they won't um, th that they won't fall victim to uh, anything that could endanger their lives, um, which is why they left in the first place. So it's good that he did that. Additionally, uh, he also signed an executive order that halts most deportations for 100 days. And I say most because he uh, did permit deportations of individuals who committed crimes to be deported until a judge in Texas decided to block that order. Now, while the case was being litigated, Joe Biden could have postponed all of the deportations that were scheduled to take place, but he didn't do that. And his lack of action led to deportations continuing as they were scheduled to do so. And as you've seen in a video I posted uh, just recently, uh, now he's basically abandoned that pledge entirely. There's an article in Law and Crime by Colin Kalmbacher, who explains this in great detail. So let's get to what Biden's administration is saying. This is the spin, if you will. So Mark Weber, a spokesman for the Department of Health and Human Services, the agency that oversees services for migrant children, said the Biden administration is moving away from the law enforcement focused approach of the Trump administration in one in which uh, child welfare is more centric. At the 66-acre site, groups of beige trailers encircle a giant white dining tent, a soccer field, and a basketball court. There is a bright blue hospital tent with white bunk beds inside. A legal services trailer has the Spanish word bienvenidos, or welcome, on a banner on its roof. Uh, there are trailers for classrooms, a barber shop, a hair salon. The facility has its own ambulances and fire trucks, as well as its own water supply. So understand the juxtaposition here that they want us to think about. When we envisioned uh, child separation under Donald Trump, uh, you know, we oftentimes learned that there were really crowded spaces that immigrants were forced into. They weren't allowed phone calls. They weren't allowed to shower and whatnot. So what they're saying here is these are actually really nice facilities. Children can uh, play. They can play basketball. It's it's a uh, uh, they have classrooms and whatnot here. Um, and so what they're trying to do very deliberately here is not get you to think of these uh, detention facilities, if you will, as jails, rather as, you know, more accommodating towards children. We're not trying to be overly cruel, and that may very well be the case. But I mean, would you say that the legal system in the United States, the jail system in the United States is any less cruel because oftentimes they have basketball courts and allow for recreational outdoor activities? Well, of course not. This is a tactic to kind of like deflect and not get you to think about the fact that we are basically jailing these children. Now, the operation is based on a federal emergency management system, Weber said. The trailers are labeled with names such as Alpha, Charlie, and Echo. Staff members wear matching black and white t-shirts displaying their roles, disaster case manager, incident report emergency management. The most colorful trailer is an entryway where flowers, butterflies, and handmade posters still hang on its walls from Carrizo's first opening in 2019, HHS has 13,200 beds for children, having exploded in growth in the past four years, adding more than 80 facilities for a total of about 200. Weber said putting children in permanent shelters is preferable to the influx shelters like Carrizo, uh, but nearly half of those beds are unusable during the pandemic. So, you know, on one hand, the question is, well, why aren't these kids 
being put into foster care immediately? Why are they staying here for approximately 30 days? Um, and, and if it is the case that the foster care system is overwhelmed right now because there is an influx of unaccompanied minors crossing the border, then, of course, we have to figure out what do we do. And there really is no easy answer to this. But I think that the main thing that the left is focusing on here and trying to argue is that we don't treat them like prisoners when they come here. Of course, reopening a jail that Trump's administration held immigrants in, who he treated as criminals, isn't the answer. Of course, there's got to be a better way, right? So, Weber said the facilities received a bad rap under the Trump administration because many people associated them with the detention centers run by immigrant, uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE. But the children always received good care, and that never wavered between administrations, he said. Um... Now, this right here is where he kind of uh, puts his foot in his mouth, because to say that the children received good care, um, you can say, OK, once we ripped the children away from the parents during the Trump era, we cared for them well. Uh, but that's still child abuse. Taking a child away from its parent, uh, that is traumatizing. It leads to long term psychological damage. That's child abuse. So to even say that the children receive good care. Doubt. <laughs> Doubt, to say the least. Um, the, ch the, the majority of child migrant facilities are subject to state licensing requirements. Temporary influx centers like Carrizo are not. However, Weber said Carrizo would meet or exceed Texas licensing standards if applicable. The influx facilities also cost more, about $775 a day per child, compared with $290 a day for permanent centers. So Weber said the influx shelters keep children from ending up in border patrol stations, uh, which have holding cells that were not designed for children. During the 2019 immigrant, immigration surge, many migrants were stuck in overcrowded cells for prolonged periods that exceeded legal limits. So basically, he's trying to propose an alternative to you. If we don't put them here in this jail cell, then they're going to end up in the really bad jail cells, which are meant for the uh, adult immigrants. And we don't want that, right? So basically, I think that that's about all that we need from this. I wanted to give you the picture that they're trying to paint for the rest of us in order to downplay, um, downplay what's happening here, downplay the fact that a Trump-era migrant jail has been reopened for children. And you can accept that there are complexities here. The influx of unaccompanied minors, again, I want to emphasize, that does pose a logistical issue, especially during a pandemic. I'm not saying that uh, we should turn them away. But let me show you, by reading this article from The Guardian, um, why what we're seeing here, the picture that the Biden administration, Mark Weber, is presenting to us is nothing more than propaganda. So he argues this week the Biden administration did the unthinkable. It reopened a Trump-era detention site for migrant children. The detention center, a reconverted camp for oil field workers in Carrizo Springs, Texas, is expected to hold 700 children between the ages of, seven, uh, of 13 and 17, and dozens of kids have already arrived there. So there's going to be a little bit of overlap between this article and the other article because he quotes the other article. So um, forgive me for the redundancy, but I, I think it is important that we be thorough here so we get a clear picture of what's happening. This is an awful development, reminding me of some of the worst abuses of the Trump years. And while we obviously don't know how this ominous development will play out in the long run, what we do know is this. Unaccompanied migrant children deserve compassion, not detention. And that is the main takeaway. Like it or not, by putting them in this facility, we're still treating them as if they are criminals. We may be treating them more kindly than we treat adult criminals, but nonetheless, they're still being treated as criminals. And the approach that we're calling for is compassion and not just compassion, an entirely new approach where we overthrow the previous fascistic regime that was in place. Abolish ICE, which is a fascist organization, regardless if liberals want to admit that or not. And anyone who supports the existence of ICE is complicit in supporting fascism in the United States. Uh, but to continue here, uh, but rather than seeking out a new and better solutions, which is what we're calling for, the Biden administration is instead trying to sell us an image of a kinder, gentler imprisonment. That's the issue. That's the issue with the Washington Post article. 
How else are we to understand the words of Mark Webber, spokesperson for Health and Human Services, the agency that oversees the welfare of unaccompanied migrant children? Webber told the Washington Post that the Biden administration is moving away from the law enforcement focused approach of the Trump administration to one in which child welfare is more centric. That may play well as a soundbite. But how welfare-centric is it to place children in jail in the first place? And if you don't think it's a jail, you should know that the unaccompanied teens sent to the Carrizo Springs shelter will not be allowed to leave the facility, as reported by the news website BorderReport.com. That is a really great point. If it's not a jail, can they leave? Again, we don't want these children to come to the United States and be uh, homeless, right? But do they have the autonomy to leave if they came to the United States and they have a loved one to stay with? Uh, the answer is no, they do not. That's really important. That's key here. It gets worse. The camp's operation will be based on a federal emergency management system where trailers are labeled with names such as Alpha, Charlie, and Echo. Names which are commonly used in military detention practices. Camp Echo, for example, is a notorious site in Guantanamo Bay. Yeah. And while staff members will thankfully not be sporting military gear, the government spokesman makes a point to tell us that they will wear matching black and white t-shirts displaying their roles, disaster case manager, incident support, emergency management, and that the most colorful trailer is at the entryway where flowers, butterflies, and handmade posters still hang on its walls from Carrizo's first opening in 2019. Give me a break. The problem with this sort of language is that it hides the brute reality of detention and covers it up with the rosy rhetoric of summer camp. The Post story describes the center as a 66-acre site where groups of beige trailers encircle a giant white dining tent, a soccer field, and a, ba and a basketball court. There is a bright blue hospital tent with white bunk beds inside. A legal services trailer has the Spanish word bienvenidos or welcome on a banner on its roof. There are trailers for classrooms rooms, a barber shop, a hair salon, who, I wonder, is really comforted by a welcome banner on a roof, the jailers or the jailed? Think I'm being ungenerous? That the Biden administration is merely trying to articulate to the public how its detention scheme will be more salubrious than Trump's? Well, if that's the case, then health concerns, especially during a pandemic, would be paramount. We've been told by the government that these children will arrive at Carrizo Springs after a period of quarantine and will all be tested for COVID before entry. Yet, when BorderReport.com asked HHS whether everyone entering the facility, and not just these teens, will be tested for the virus, they did not receive a direct answer. It doesn't stop there. Despite the language coming from the administration, these children are facing a terrible and possibly illegal situation. In 1997, a class action lawsuit settlement established standards for the detention and release of unaccompanied minors taken into custody by the authorities. According to the Flores Settlement Agreement, the federal government must transfer these unaccompanied children to a non-secure and licensed facility within days of being in custody. In an emergency, the government can keep the children for up to 30 days while seeking to reunite them with family members or place them with a sponsor. Meanwhile, the Carrizo Springs site is a secure site. The kids can't leave. It's unlicensed by the state of Texas. It's operated by a government contractor for the Office of Refugee Resettlement and is expected to hold children for 30 days, as reported by the Washington Post, which is obviously longer than the 20 days dictated by the Flores Agreement. The detention is also very expensive, coming in at a cost of $775 a day per child compared with $290 a day for permanent centers. All of these extremely disturbing facts surrounding this detention should elicit massive amounts of outrage in all of us, but the Biden administration seeks to deflect the criticism by assuring us their version of childhood detention is thoughtful and humane. Even while opening a facility where kids are delivered in unmarked vans to an internment camp that is geographically remote and difficult to access. Does it feel like we're being sold a bill of goods? It sure does to me. Yes, it's not as malevolent as the family separation policies of Trump, but if our way of judging political conduct now is whether something is simply better or worse than Trump was, then we've elevated Trump's actions into our new standard of behavior. And when we do that, we've lost any genuine sense of judgment in the first place. There's no question that with rising numbers of unaccompanied minors arriving at the border during COVID, the Biden administration has a difficult road ahead, but expanding a long discredited system that detains children cannot be the answer, no matter how good the government wants to make it sound. Every government spins their message, but if we fall unthinkingly for the spin, the fault isn't with them, it's with us. And he's making a really, 
valid criticism, but he's also being charitable and acknowledging that this is an issue. It's a tough issue. I don't necessarily know that we have the right answers here. Who knows how to deal with unaccompanied minors if we haven't already changed the system itself, but certainly we have to change the system, not focus on detention. Uh, but most importantly, I, I think it's pretty reasonable to expect our government to not treat children as criminals. And that's what's happening here. This is a jail. That's what this is. These are cages that we are keeping children in. If we don't call it what it is, we're not being intellectually honest with ourselves. Now, AOC also called out the Biden administration. She says, this is not okay. Never has been okay. Never will be okay. No matter the administration or the party. And she's saying this in direct response to the propaganda article released by the Washington Post. She adds, our immigration system is built on a carceral framework. It's no accident that challenging how we approach both these issues are considered controversial stances. They require reimagining our relationship to each other and challenging common assumptions we take for granted. It's only two months into this administration and our fraught, unjust immigration system will not transform in that time. That's why bold reimagination is so important. DHS shouldn't exist. Agencies should be reorganized. ICE gotta go. Ban for-profit detention. Create climate refugee status and more. And in terms of answering the question, what do we do? Because that really is the question. So liberals will say in response to, um, to the left being outraged about this, they'll say, well, what do you propose we do? Well, AOC shared this answer. There is legislation that has been uh, proposed by AOC, uh, Jayapal Escobar, which would right the wrongs of our cruel immigration system. And this is really long, so I can't read it. But the goal is to establish a just, humane system, so that way we don't treat immigrants as if they're inherently criminals, and we especially do not treat child immigrants, unaccompanied minors, as if they're criminals. Because regardless of how we want to frame this situation, regardless of how the Biden administration spins it, we are treating G these children as criminals. We are caging children. That has not changed. And you can try to you know, uh, change the way that you conceptualize detention and immigration in order to give Biden a pass here. But if you do that, I would argue you're not being truthful with yourself. You're not fighting past the cognitive dissonance. You're not actually being principled. So at the end of the day, this is the answer. And in the short term, there is uh, no, no easy questions here in terms of how we deal with unaccompanied minors. We, of course, admit them into the country. However, how we deal with them, it does matter. Being outraged at the fact that we are treating them like criminals, that does matter. And getting this rosy picture of the way that um, they're being treated here, that doesn't change things. Of course, one immigrant activist uh, said that she kind of feels a little bit better about this because this is basically the Cadillac of um, the Cadillac of detention facilities. Let me see if I could find the quote here. Because I think it really um, it speaks to the way that as individuals we try to um, we try to convince ourselves that um, something that's bad isn't actually that bad. So this is from Rosie uh, Abu Abrera. Uh, I consoled myself with the fact that it was considered the Cadillac of migrant child centers, but I don't have any hope that Biden is going to make it better. And that's just it. Uh, you know, this person was really horrified when this detention facility, when this cage concentration camp was reopened and she tried to console herself by saying this is the Cadillac of migrant children centers and perhaps psychologically that helps to comfort us but at the end of the day we're lying to ourselves if we say that this is um this is different than the Trump era because it's not if we're still treating children as criminals that is no different there are substantive differences in approaches to immigration and that Biden, at this point in time, doesn't seem to be reinstituting uh, the deterrent as uh, an approach to immigration, as Trump and Obama was um, yet. But, um, you know, the good news is Biden still has time to turn this around. And if he does actually pass immigration reform, perhaps we can change our approach. But I know for damn sure that nothing's going to change if we keep giving Democrats a pass for the same things that we criticize Republicans for. So what I call on liberals to do is be consistent and understand where leftists are coming from here 
in condemning this, which is kids in cages, regardless of how you want to spin it. And it's morally reprehensible. You know, you, you, you know, you know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man. man.